making a gluten-free black forest cake that will not only outshine its glutinous cousins, but will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. The black forest cake is probably the cake which inspired me to get into baking as a child. I could have cherries, dark chocolate, and certainly my favorite whipped cream, and you could get your first taste of liquor in form of a cake. The black forest cake combines all those different sensations, flavors, and textures into one perfect bite. It is definitely the most efficient way to consume all those flavors and probably the best German inventions besides the diesel engine, the electric microscope or contact lenses. I can't show you how to make an electronic microscope, but I can show you how to make a black forest cake, so let's get started. Since the black forest cakes has a few steps, it's normally better to make it over one or two days. On the first day, I normally make the cake bottom, the sponge cake and the cherry filling. And since it's a bit more difficult to make the cake bottom and the chocolate sponge cakes, I'm going to show that separately in an upcoming video. For the filling, you want to use 350 or 400 grams, which is about three quarters of a pound of dark cherries or morello cherries. You can often buy them in a jar or you can buy them frozen or you can even use fresh ones. Strain the cherries from any extra liquid and preserve it for the next step. And place the cherries into a dry bowl. Measure 60 milliliters, which is about a quarter cup of cherry juice and pour it in a pot. And add 60 gram, which is about a quarter cup of sugar to the cherry juice and you want to sprinkle one package of gelatin, which is about 10 grams, onto the top of the cherry juice. Now set it aside and wait for the cherry juice to be absorbed by the gelatin, which may take 3 to 5 minutes. You will see how the gelatin changes from a very opaque to a translucent color. Now you want to heat up the gelatin and the cherry juice on a very low heat until all the gelatin granules are dissolved. If you are steering with a spatula, you can actually feel how the texture of the gelatin is going to change. When the gelatin is dissolved, you want to add about 3 quarter cup or 150 milliliters of cherry juice. You want to continue heating up the cherry juice with the gelatin until you reach almost the boiling point. Just make sure you don't reach the boiling point because that is when you destroy the gelatin. Remove the cherry juice with the gelatin from the stove and pour it over the cherries. Now you want to add two tablespoons of Kirschwasser or brandy and some places prefer dark rum and the grated peel of one lemon. Give it one more good steer and let the cherry juice and the gelatin solidify in the fridge for four to five hours. On the second day, when the cherry filling has solidified and the chocolate sponge cake and the cake bottoms have cooled down, I'm going to start assembling the cake. It is much easier to assemble the black forest cake if you've got a basic plastic turntable. I like to place a silicone mat on the turntable to make sure the cake rounds doesn't slide around. I spread around one teaspoon of honey or jam on the top of the cake round before I place the cake bottom. That again prevents the cake bottom to slide around. Now I add one teaspoon of honey or jam on the top of the cake bottom to make sure the cake doesn't slide around. And now I have to slice the cake into three equal layers, which is a bit tricky if you have never done this before. The easiest way is with a long, sharp knife. You want to score the edges first and then slowly while you rotate the cake, keep on cutting deeper into the cake until you can take the layers apart. I'm going to put two of the cake layers aside and start scooping and spreading the cherry filling onto the first cake layer. I'm going to try to keep the cherry filling layer not thicker than 2 cm or 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to place now the second chocolate sponge cake layer on the top of the cherries and slightly press down with my hand, making sure the cake is relatively level. I like my cake to have a kick, so I'm going to add 2 tablespoons of Kirschwasser or brandy on the top of the second cake layer, but it's not necessary. Now to the tricky bit. I have to make the gelatin to stabilize the whipped cream. If you don't stabilize the heavy cream, you might end up with the Leaning Tower of Pisa. To get started with the gelatin, you want to pour about half a cup of water into a pot. Add 50 gram of sugar, which is about one quarter cup. Now I'm going to follow the same steps as I did with the cherry juice. I'm going to sprinkle one package of gelatin over the water, let the water completely be absorbed and slowly heat up the gelatin until all the granules are dissolved. 
I'm gonna take the pot off the stove and let the gelatin reach room temperature. That may take 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending how warm it is. This is an important step though, so you don't wanna rush it. At this point, you wanna add around 50 milliliter or a quarter cup of cold heavy cream to the gelatin to even lower the temperature. I want the gelatin to be almost the same temperature as the heavy whipping cream. I'm measuring the remaining heavy whipping cream to make sure I have 700 milliliters, which is about three cups, and whip it until it reached the soft peak. That is normally when the heavy cream already can hold a shape, but is not yet stiff. At that point, I add the gelatin to the heavy whipping cream and continue whipping the cream until it's stiff. I'm gonna scoop now some of the heavy cream onto the top of the second cake layer and evenly spread it until it's about one centimeters or half an inch thick. I'm gonna place now the third cake layer on the top of the heavy cream. I'm gonna cover now all the sides of the cake with the heavy cream. I'm gonna make sure it's a thin layer though because what I'm doing is really just a crumb layer. The crumb layer is really sort of a glue, making sure that everything stays inside the cake. I normally put the cake at this point for 10 to 20 minutes into the freezer to make sure that the heavy cream is slightly frozen. That is sort of a trick I learned to make sure that my Black Forest cake looks really nice and professional. I'm gonna put the cake back onto the turntable and add to all sides more heavy whipped cream. With a spatula, I make sure that I get all the sides nice and smooth. With the power of a cake scraper, I'm gonna make the edges look really nice and professional. With a cake spatula, I'm gonna square away the top of the cake. For the decoration, I'm gonna pipe a few rosettes on the top of the cake and sprinkle with a mash a little bit of cocoa butter on the top. Each rosette gets a candy cherry. For the final touch, I'm gonna shave some chocolate with a potato peeler and decorate the rim of the cake with the chocolate shavings. I'm gonna put a little bit of the shavings on the cake spatula and carefully press that against the rim. And here's your gluten-free black forest cake where nobody ever would think of that this could be gluten-free. I have the ingredients, the amount, and where you can buy them down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a gluten-free black forest cake. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel. Also add any comments, review, and thoughts. And make sure to check the bell that you get notifications about any upcoming videos.